deliberations I think we have a presentation from Dave Ambrose um, the assessor to start off yeah. um, as part of our um, budget deliberations thanks Rose. good evening usually I wait until February until I speak to the town council in regards to the ground list however this year is a rebound year so I wanted to wait until the Board of Appeals finished their duties. Mike mentioned during his budget presentation that the tax revenue increased by $1.77 million. And I, I used the uh, current mill rate of 33.58 for comparative purposes. That $1.77 million increase equates to an assessed increase of $52 million or 4.14%. Or that, that also equates to a 100% market value of $75 million. I want to uh, speak about the ground list, uh, I'm sorry, the evaluation. During my 34 years in assessing, this is my fifth rebound and by far my favorite. Um, first of all, thank you for approving my choice of companies. They're, they're great. This company, and for one of the reasons why I chose this company is because they're the only company in New England that has MAIs on staff. That means members of the Appraisal Institute, These are top-notch appraisers. They also personally value each commercial property in town. Who was the company again? Minibal, Visible Valuation. They were excellent. They're, they only do Connecticut rebounds. Uh, and on my part, I, for quality control purposes, I check the topmost 1,000 properties and the bottommost 1,000 properties. Again, for quality control reasons, and I modified around 2% of those properties. Uh, in some cases, uh, and by the way, they're mostly commercial properties. Uh, for example, I felt for some properties, using the income approach that the estimated gross rents were, were too high. Uh, appraisers, assessors use um, estimated market rents and actual expenses. So I modified those numbers a little bit. The purpose of reval is to equalize assessments. So every property owner pays their fair share of their property tax. That's actually the first thing you learned in the assessor school. And um, the goal at Reval is to have the assessments at 70% of their fair market value. Uh, but during the five year period between Revals, property values fluctuate. They appreciate and or depreciate. For example, let's say Colonials uh, increase in value during, uh, over the course of a revaluation for five years. And let's say ranchers decreased in value. So what happens is, if you take a snapshot, let's say three years from now, and you say Colonial's actually increased in value, the gap between the fixed assessment of 70% and the new market value increases, resulting in a lower ratio. And for this scenario, let's say 65%. And let's say that the ranches decreased in value. So the difference, the gap between the fixed assessment of 70% for ranches and the new market value for ranches has tightened. So that pushes the ratio over 70%. So in this scenario, colonials are paying less than their fair share and ranches are paying more than their fair share. And this is what revaluation is for, to fix this problem. Okay, uh, now the board. 
Um, again, I wanted to wait to see how many appeals we had before I, I talked to Tom Castle. And we had 21 appeals. And that's, I think it's pretty amazing. Just 21 appeals, 11 commercial appeals, and 10 residential appeals. Uh, again, using the current mill rate of 33.58 by eight for comparative purposes, um, the board reduced uh, tax revenue in the amount of $48,000 or 2.7%. Any purported valuation inequities were finalized at that BA level. So what I'm saying is that there's not going to be any court cases. We're not, not going to, we're not going to pay any legal fees for attorneys or court fees. Uh, so the net result would be that um, I said I mentioned, like Mike mentioned, um, the revenue increase for this year's grant list was 1.77 million, and the board gave back roughly 50 million, 50 million. I'm sorry, 50,000 in in revenue. So I think we're holding firm at $17.65 million. Just briefly, over the course of our six years together, uh, including this revaluation, we realized an aggregate revenue increase of $3.6 million with a reduction of only $120,000 $120, due to PAA and court appeals. So I, that's why I said I think this reval was very, very successful. Okay. Any questions? No. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, Want to move on to uh, police? So, in the general government services, so we're in the in our black binder book here. So that encompasses all of the departments. So the, the only thing that I have in the police budget is, so one of our questions prior to budget was, we wanted to know the percentage of increase that was figured into the budget for union contracts and admin, because we know there's contracts are up for renewal um, this year. And so we were told 2.5%. Was Anthony, was that like on all the secretaries? Yeah. Because Everything I about public works is, is, is I know, but but the, when I looked at last year's budget book and then I looked at this year's budget book and on the secretaries, their the salaries were the same. There was no two point five percent increase. So it's a contingency. Oh, so it's not in the it's budget. Not in, in, the, in the department, because it's unsettled. You can't. There's no idea what it's going to end up being. So we put the money in contingency. Well, that, that's well. Sometimes it was like one percent or one yeah, in, in right. the budget book, and then you're the right. remainder we would take out of contingency. Yeah, so, two and a half in contingency. So you, it's all in contingency then. Right. Okay. So in the the I noticed in the salary for the secretary for the police department in last year's budget book to this year's budget book. It shows a 15% increase. They had a bump halfway through the year. So. But it, it, it would, her, it, her salary would drop 15%? It shouldn't be 15%, but they, they did have a bump uh, halfway through the year. Well, when I, when I took what was in the budget book for this year and then compared it to what was in the budget book for last year, okay. it was fif a 15% increase, which just seemed out of proportion to everything else. So, th th so that was the only thing that we need to look, that was the only thing that I noted in the police department. If Anthony, if you could check that and get back to us um, for the meeting next week on there. And I, I think that's, that's partially because um, for half the year she was paid at one rate, then the second half she was paid at another rate and then now this entire year she's paid at that, that second rate. So I'm not, we'd have to go back and double check the, the numbers, but that's why there was an increase on her and her salary. Well, but yeah, I'm I mean, not I, sure, I, I, I'm not sure the 15%, we'll have to double check. Yeah, that was, that was, the 15% is yeah. what I'm questioning. I mean, if it was a couple percent, uh, that would be understandable, yeah. but 15 just seemed a little yeah. high. Yeah. 
on there. If anything, a mid-year increase should keep it down because half the year you yeah. Yeah. comparable yeah. to this year and it's yeah. only six yeah, months. I'm not, I'm not sure why. Yeah, know, so we'll just. We'll might have just been a fat finger on something. <laughs> <laughs> So, so we'll check that and see once what the, that's all that I have. I don't know if anyone else had anything from police, but that was the only thing that I noticed in their budget that I was looking at. Um, anyone else have anything on police? No. Okay. Um, Anything on fire? I didn't have anything on fire on the fire department's budget. I'm not sure if anyone else no. had anything. Okay. <coughs> We just wanted to do police first in case, you know, you had to, to leave for any reason. Thank you. Okay. So, so do we want to just go down the list here? Yep. Okay. So in finance department, um, so when is the anticipated switch over to Munis? Because I guess that's the way we're going, to the new system. Is it, are we targeting for July 1st and is it a gradual, in, you know, switch over? How does that work? It will probably be the entire 21, 22 year will be on the current software for both of us. It'll probably be July of 22 when we um, make the break. Okay, so that, that, because I, that, the, the reason for my question is because of the data processing charges in the budget on the current system and if we were switching over why would we have to pay data processing on, right. on the old system so okay so we can not do anything with that one since we'll still be on the old system um, okay um, on assessor this this increase is going to just take effect um, the only thing I had in the assessors was the full-time account clerk, the, the salary difference, and that's being taken care of through contingency. So I don't have anything else under assessor. Um, under central services, um, so I noticed that, and I know we've talked about this, you know, throughout this year so far, of the request for the secretary going from 25 hours a week to full time. Um, and I noticed that that change was made in the budget. Um, personally, um, I don't think we have gotten all of the information in regards to the need for this. Are we talking about? In Purchasing? Is that which yes, C central services is, is purchasing, purchasing. Okay. right. Um, one of the big things that we had talked about um, was that secretary also helps social services during the busy time and we had talked about is it possible that the senior center park rec, since they're in the same building, could that staff help out during the busy time instead of taking the secretary from down here to go up there. And there is a position in park and rec that has not been filled for two years um, and is still in their budget. And if that position is filled, would that enable them to help out for social services during the few months that they have that they have increased demand? Um, so. My feeling is, and you know, we can discuss this, but I just think that we should keep it at part time, right at the 25 hours right now. Um, and if the need is proven during the year, we can always switch it and take the difference out of contingency if we decide to move it from part time or the 25 hours to full time. 
on there. It's a difference of about $15,000, um, but that's my opinion. And have we gotten, have we received any kind of response as to whether or not the person over in Park and Rec can do this? I don't think we've ever gotten a response. Right, that's part of the reason is right. we haven't gotten any information back and they have that one position that hasn't been filled for two years either. So that would be another staff member that they would have on board can if that position was filled. Can someone remind it, the full-time need, was this, can someone recap whether this was due to te a temporary need or is this, you know, something that's long -term, a long-term need? Um, because, I mean, you wouldn't want somebody to be pulling back and forth and be divided that way if this is an ongoing need. Yeah, what, it, it had been a uh, previously in, in the past, going back, I guess, uh, a few few years, uh, seven, maybe maybe longer, a full-time position, came in a part-time position. I think recently had been the conversation around the uh, capital projects, building projects that we're doing with respect to the high school, PD, uh, middle school, and so mm -hmm. forth, and telecommunications is going to come down the road as well. Uh, from a bidding and, and document standpoint, pushing through all that uh, information. But was, was that receding back to half part-time from a full-time position, what triggered that? Was it that there was nothing, that person didn't have anything to do, or was that we're having a financial issue or a budget issue? What prompted receding to part-time? I really, um, I, I and, and again, before I, I, I think, Anthony could probably speak to it, um, or Michelle, uh, certainly. Uh, but I think the person in the position wanted, uh, and was close to retirement, wanted to, to, and I may be misspeaking, so I, I probably should defer to them, because uh, it really was in the works before I, before I got here. Um, so, uh, if Michelle wants, or Anthony can speak I guess, who, yeah, whoever's most impacted by this, I would love to hear what their, what they think the need is. Hi, I'm Michelle. I'm the purchasing assistant for the town of North Frankfurt and the risk manager, too. Um, as Mike said, the secretary I had at the time was full-time, was looking to retire, and there, we were done with the MBIS project. So during when construction was going on with MBIS, she was full-time. The town held the contracts for all of that. Um, and then she was looking to retire and just work part-time. There was some conflict with the union at the time, giving up that full-time position into a part-time position. It was agreed to that she could work part-time until um, she had retired, and it re has remained that way for all these years. Um, with being the risk manager and the purchasing department, it's and then my secretary is also secretary to social services year-round. As Rose said, there's times of the year it gets very busy, so she's taken out of my office, gone up to social services, so the work in my office doesn't get done during the busy times. The rest of the year is the constant uh, the f answering on the phone, processing purchase orders, um, bills that come in from my department. She handles initially, I approve them. Now that we have the construction contracts, uh, construction projects going on, we, the town, are required for the high school project to do uh, <coughs> requests for qualifications for certain services, commissioning agents, so forth. So we're right now probably processing three to four RFPs every week. They either go to permanent project, they come to town council for review, so forth. This will continue for the next 30 months. There's always going to be something that the town has to hire mandated by the state for reimbursement. We're gonna have a police station for the next 12 to 18 months. We have the um, um, communications coming up. Next summer we're looking at roof for Stanley T. Williams and whatever we're going to do with the MBIS project. So it's a constant, you know, but the, but the high school project, Gil Bain, is in charge of a lot of the con a, a lot of the contracts because they're the construction manager at risk. They are for the subcontractors to build the project. We, the town of Rockgate, and the state mm -hmm. statute 
to hire material testing, third code review. Um, which is all happening now. Which is doing now. Which but, there, but, but those don't continue for all 30 months. Third party review isn't at month 24. No, but 24, there could be right? others that the state requires for reimbursement. So it's not, and then there's also the processing of paperwork that goes with these projects to purchase orders, invoices that come in. She helps assist with um, the uh, uh, permanent project building meetings. Michelle sends the minutes and the agendas and helps me making copies for the group and so forth. So there's constantly something going on in the office. And like I said, she also assists social services. And you know, so how, how many hours a week would you say she assists social services? Well, right now, since the governor extended fuel assistance, that's now through June. So she has to contact between 80 and 100 people, is my understanding, that that program is still going on. So that's taking away from anything to do in my office. If the governor extends that again, it's all that processing of okay. paperwork and contacting people. Okay, so, that's a, so the question was about how many hours a week does, does she get taken away to do stuff for social services? Probably about an average of 10 hours a week. It sounds to me like we had a full-time position and it became a half-time position not due to the town's needs but due to a person's individual's retirement needs is how that was just presented and i well, feel we like we finished you know, building a 40 million dollar school in yeah yes yeah and she and stayed on through that and yep. then there you go back to the normal amount of work that's done yep so and now we do have a long stretch of stuff happening we have correct. i mean i don't know and I can understand that that's got to put a lot of pressure on. And, and she also assists with, you know, we have workers' comp claims, lawsuits, and so forth. So that's also part of her position, too, is helping me with those. Yeah. And, you know, I follow up on workers' comp claims, deal with the town attorneys on any lawsuits that come through. So it's, it could change daily, you yeah. know. There's So I'm hoping that the you know town council really thinks hard about this. We there's not much you can get done in a five hour period. She also does the mail, the answering of the phones when we're under COVID, all the acceptance of the supplies coming in through the front door. So it's it's constant. You know, like I said, we're redoing all the RFPs and RFQs for the uh, construction attorney we just hired. So. We're redoing those again. Thank you. Thank you. Right, but I think part of our job, this is an, you know, we need to look at this as an opportunity. If there are other ways to shift and get and get the, the uh, accomplish the same task, and that's what we, we need to look at. And I think that's what we're, we've been asking for, for information and to, to make the, the right decision. Yeah, I think these are all fair questions, and I think I think that is certainly something you want to try to do. I also want to make sure, I mean, I'm seeing that people are under a lot of pressure, and we don't know how long this will continue. I mean, between the high school project, between, you know, all of the, you know, there's a, there are a lot of changes to how our, our elections are being run now. There are a lot of changes, and I feel like, you know, I just want to make sure that they have the support yep. that they need, because we have a lot going on. So... Um, I want to make yeah. sure that it's, you know, they have the professional support they need. Okay. So the next item in central services is in line item, um, it's account 4136.311, facilities maintenance. And there's a budget item for $2,000 for town hall concrete repair. Um, and in the current budget, in the 2021 budget, we have allocated $150,000 to repair and install stairs and do concrete work at the town hall. Um, and, and also, we have established the maintenance fund um, that Franny is now in charge of um, to take care of this type of thing. So I would like to make a motion to delete $2,000 from account 4136.311 for town hall concrete repairs. 
I'll, I'll second that. I agree because we've had this money. We started a couple years ago talking about having it. And we should be using it. Right. That was forty-one sixty-six dash eleven. Forty-one thirty-six point three eleven. Point three eleven. $2,000. Or I think you took mine. Huh? I think you took mine. No, she I'm not just kidding. <laughs> uh, any other discussion? one is ambulance um, so this is an account that we discuss every year it's in the red every year um, so there was we did increase it some last year and I see there's a larger increase in for this year um, so there's a $75,000 increase in for this year um, so I would like to make a motion to decrease account 4225.308 contractual services by $50,000. This will still give a $25,000 increase over the current budget. I'll second that for discussion. Could I just ask the fire chief why it was such a large increase for next year? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Why it was such a large increase for next year? What? Well, which which account were you it's taking? Fifty thousand dollars in contractual services for the for ambulance. ambulance. For ambulance. Uh, so I believe it has to do, and I'll, Anthony, I'll reach back to you with the laptop out there, um, contractual wages for Bintech management. Yeah, that's uh, an accurate, plus coupled with the fact that our billing revenue was down in 1920, and about $20,000 under the budgeted number that we had received. So those two items, as the chief had mentioned, increases in the contractual obligations for the contract that we have, as well as a decrease in billing revenue due to, uh, during COVID times, our call volume uh, diminished. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. But the amount that was budgeted won't necessarily take us out of the red. Correct. At, at the 250 number brought us to a $4,800 positive balance. That's why the 250 was put in there to bring it to, to bring it to the, to the black. Um, manager reduced it down to 225, which we yielded about a 20,000 negative balance uh, based on our current projection. So if you're going to knock 50 off of that, you're talking about a $70,000 negative fund balance when all is said and done. If the project, projection Anthony, are those wage increases you refer to the thirty thousand dollars is that locked in or projected or how did you come up with that number? It's a uh, a bid that was done probably three years ago with the contract labor. There are uh, gradual increases every year on what they bill us for a paramedic per hour and so on, and that's what that said. So that's the actual aggregate of those contractual increases for the upcoming year. Correct. Yeah, there, there's one year left on, on that contract with Bintech Management. <laughs> That, that's the largest mover in the expenses, is the uh, contractual obligations. Okay. 
I'm going to withdraw my motion at this point in time, and we can always come back to this. Um, did you want to say something, Chief? Yeah, just uh, kind of an FYI, and we, we've, and it goes back to uh, Councilman Warren's question about uh, the fintech side, you know? So there's always been this uh, thought process of instead of paying an independent contractor, why doesn't the town hire its own staff to provide these services? Hence, over a year's period, there should be a total reduced cost uh, when you look at what the contractual obligation to Vintech is. So, again, questions from our staff have um, kind of been posed to us. Well, let's sit down and let's try to calculate this out. And we basically say to them, hey, listen, you know, right now the town doesn't pay any type of insurance that they don't pay workers comp. Uh, it's all the contractual obligation by the third party here that most of our people work for. Um, but there's there's always that possibility of, you know, in, in the next fiscal year, okay, let's look at what it would actually cost if it was operated in-house as opposed to farming it out. Because th there's, there's a significant difference on what we pay Vintech and what they pay their employer uh, employees. So when you look at the comparison of other EMT and other paramedics that are working for other services compared to what they're being paid in North Bamford, it's relatively low here. Um, not to say that people that work for another service come here to do a lot of calls because many of them think of it as I'm coming here to, for a little R&R &R and to answer really true emergencies that happen in our community as opposed to other types of calls that they go on to in other urban areas. Um, so it's something you may want to think about. Okay, thank okay. you. Thanks. So I withdrew my motion. We're I'll withdraw gonna... my second. And we can always come back to this next week if, depending on how the budget is looking. Um, next area is ref refuse. 4302 and so I'm based on our conversation that we had at the public hearing or, or at the council meeting the night of the public hearing um, I'm concerned about whether we have enough tonnage if we're if we're too light on the tonnage um, based on the conversation about how much in the past year, and I know the past year has been extraordinary with COVID and people being home, and there was probably a lot of cleanouts done and and everything else. And I did notice that the tonnage from last year to this year's budget book is increased by 500 um, tons. And just wondering if that is a good estimate, or is it too low? Well, I think you've I think you've got to look. Yeah. Well, if you took an MSW uh, versus bulky waste, and I think we saw increases on, on both sides, but um, it's hard to know. Uh, and again, if you if for for budget purposes, you want to you want to you know add to that, it, it, it's probably a prudent thing. Um, I, but again, I, I I don't want to overcook it, so to speak, and uh, um, it, it's just a really hard hard to say because this is it just sets an anomaly in terms of the pandemic that if I think maybe what we can do if, if possible is to, to dig uh, so to speak into the into the numbers if we can go back to look at trying to get out of the anomaly and, and look back in terms of what a trend might show us in terms of or budget book over budget book and look or just looking at tonnage numbers of was it you well know? you must have actuals right because you yeah. get the monthly mm -hmm. so yeah. you have actuals sure. for the last two yeah. years like pre-covid and yeah. COVID, right right mm -hmm. yeah. that yeah. you can look at to see um and the other thing is i know i know we haven't settled the contract um on the trash yet and you know this is assuming wallingford the trash going to wallingford on right. here potentially yeah well that's i that's the way it looks like these numbers were based on that. So I, I just don't know if, if, if that's the case, um, 
based on the information that was given to us, this would be low. If, if, because the recommendation was to go with always, and if this well, is going to Wallingford, there was a difference in there, and I know you're doing that. So I think for the next, you know, our budget meeting, there's, I don't think there's anything we can do tonight on this. Yeah. We just need more information as far as tonnage and also, you know, one of the things we have to do is, is settle the trash contract or come up with something in the budget where we think it's going to be, if we don't settle it next week, um, where we think this is going to go so that we're a little bit what, what safer. Num what number's in that book? Well, it's um, 1 million 429 okay. 400. Right, yes. I just want to make sure it's the same as the last, the last book we got uh, on the last meeting. Okay. But that's that's assuming that it's going to Wallingford. And if if it comes back that John's isn't going to go to Wallingford, it's going someplace else, and that changes, then that will change this on here. So, so there's a couple pieces to this that we need to look at um, for our next meeting. Sure. On there. We Michelle, did you have anything? Well, the tonnage for this past year from here was 4,400 tons says, uh, of MSW. It's under, uh, so in the budget, we put in 4,700 tons yeah. for no wonder, the current year. So that would cover garbage. Uh, in the past two years, we have not had to worry about recycling through Mira, but we do have tonnage on what it actually was. So that's where the 1,300 came from. And then as Mike alluded to, with COVID this year, the bulk was out of whack. I honestly feel by the coming fall pickup, we'll go back to normal. I envision the spring coming up next week uh, is going to be high, and that would be in this current year budget. So um, the numbers that the all in from John's is less than the actual budget based on what they gave us with their tipping fees. So I think the numbers are pretty accurate, but Mike and I can certainly sit down. We've already had a discussion with John's on an all-in number, which is what the town council requested. At the last meeting, we're having a meeting tomorrow with All-American on an all-in number. My definition of all-in is you don't get paid a penny more than whatever number they're going to come and give us. It's not going to be the tipping fees of just monthly by the weight. They're going to have to determine based on what the tonnage has been over the years that that has been a trend it's going up slightly each year. But we've tracked it through the mirror tickets because we paid the tipping fee. When it was an all-in rate with the Johns, they would give us tonnage rates each year, each month, you know, and then it started out about 4,000, then it went to about 4,200. This past year it was 4,400 tons of MSW, and the budget now has 4,700 tons of MSW. So what? So if it's an all-in, and let's say, so we estimate 4,700 here, mm -hmm. but the actual at the end of the year is 4,500. So. Are we paying just on the 4,500, or are we paying the 47 in what was their, you know? Well, we'll come up with based on what they feel is going to be the tonnage for the year, and we would pay that amount. So, so if we're uh, if we're under, we don't get a credit, and if we're over, we don't get billed. Correct. Okay. So whatever the number is, that's the number, no matter yeah. how much weight there is. Correct. So if we're under they don't give us a credit, we still pay the same number. But on the flip side, if we're over, we still pay the same What's number. What's nice about it is we know what we're paying. Right. So and it's no, a fixed we're know budget we're number every year. The way they did it this year was based that the MSW, as it has in the past, with us paying the tipping fees, would fluctuate that bill. The service fee would be X amount of dollars, plus the tonnage, and that tonnage would vary from month to month. So we really never know until the end of the year what the total cost is going to be. What we discussed with John's already was that the bulk 
would not be part of, as I call it, the base contract, the MSW, the recycling. We, the town, would pay the tipping fees based on the bulk that's collected next week and with hopes that in the fall, it goes back to normal again. So um, that wouldn't be, it, it, there's no sense in paying for high bulk as we have this past year if it goes down and goes back to normal for the next five years. You know, so I wanted to take that part out of what would be the base number. And then we could also calculate certainly based on what we paid this past year for bulk. And then like I said, in the fall, hopefully go back to normal tonnage. Michelle, did you say that you had the number of like what the average was over the past five years? Yes. And not not including this past year? Uh, yes. Do you have that number? With me tonight? No. Yeah. No, but I can certainly get it. So we point. know the average for the past five, how many tons per year? Yeah. That'd be a good number to have. But don't forget, recycling, when, when Johns had their all-in uh, contract prior to these last two years, everything was just a number. Since we went with Mira and we paid the tipping fees, we have it broken down by what goes to Cherry Hill for both, what is going to Johns for both, what is going to Mira for recycling with no cost, and what MSW has gone to Mira. So that's for the last two years. So that, that would be years. good broken down to see, because that's we kind of- We have a spreadsheet for that. Yeah, that's kind of a pre-COVID and COVID yeah, time correct. frame. Right, so that's why I said this current year, um, it was uh, 4,400 tons of just MSW alone, which is your trash. Right. So we budgeted for this year, 4,700 tons. And free recycling goes away with Mirror. July 1st. we're done with Mirror June 30th. Anyways. Right. Right. So Michelle, when they're, they're um, redoing their bids here, mm -hmm. are they doing it like when they, are they doing it closed we'll say going against each other or we they don't know what the other one's proposing right they're going to give those numbers to mike and i only and then it's a closed bid yes so they they don't know we've met with john we told him that we want numbers by tomorrow we have a meeting with all american tomorrow via zoom give us your best number sharpen your pencil and give us your all-in number and like i said to me all-in is you get paid that, nothing, nothing more. And then we have a set budget number for the next five years. Is there anything in the contract or in the, in the bid to, um, for the, the garbage tote, you know, the, 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 yeah. the totes that, because if it changes company, we need to know that people that need, whether it's recycling or garbage totes, that they're available and they can get them. Yes. Um, so replacements, new ones. Right. Mm -hmm. So whatever, whoever gets it right. knows right. that they have to do that. Correct. That's still in the budget. That's still in the proposal. Okay, and is that something the town has to pay for? Because I know we paid no. initially with Johns when they went to automated, you know, nine years ago. Yeah. No, um, if a resident wants a second tote, they um, deal with John's Direct, pay John's Direct. The town is not involved at all in second totes. Okay, so like new construction, new totes, they get those for free, the first ones, correct? One of each. Okay. Yes. Okay. And are we going to have resolution on the clarification? I know you were asking about in terms of what the cost is going to be no matter where it is going. Right, that's part mm -hmm. of Is that what it's going to, we're going to have all of that? <laughs> yes. Okay. We hope. Okay. That that's part of what's coming back to us. And okay. Yeah, they either all are, uh, American, all American takes it to their facility, Berlin. If John wants to take it to Wallingford, that's fine. If John wants to take it to Shelton or Lisbon or any other place that they can take it, that will be their option, but it's going to be for X amount of dollars and that's it. Right, it's not a fluctuating no. Got it. Yeah. thing. Yeah. Right. We, we need to make sure that we're comparing apples with apples. Correct. That's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. 
um, not two different ways. So. So all wins, all in, and we don't care where they go. Well, they have. Well, they, they I mean, they have their own facility, so. But John's can go. Does John, it, we don't, we don't right, care where they go. Again, right. We're just looking for apples to apples in terms of uh, the, the the methodology and, and the, you know the, the the tipping fee and the price. So it, it's up to them to figure out what's going to be most efficient for them. Okay. So if you can get that information for the next meeting and. Um, Okay, next is public works. Um, I know there were questions in regards to the arborist, which is in the budget. Um, and thank you, Franny, for sending us uh, the information about everything that an arborist would do um, and, ev and everything. And if you could just kind of highlight some of that stuff and like what the benefit is of an of an arborist that would be great. Um, yes, yeah, so here. Yeah. Well, we can, but the microphone is for Tawtucket TV. Um, yeah. So an arborist, you know, we we had an arborist before on staff that retired. And uh, so this time around, you know, we're looking for an arborist. There's, there's a lot of tree laws and um, uh, management stuff that we need to catch up on, to be honest with you. Uh, when you're an arborist, you know, we end up, we have our herbicide license, which is uh, something that's regulated by the state, so that reports that have to be done. And that also includes the school properties. We have the whole pest, pest management. Um, protocols we have to do. Uh, vegetation management is just another thing that a, an artist is in charge of. Um, <clears throat> the um, uh, invasive species, that's a whole other program that also ties into it, um, um, our um, plan for the town. Um, there's, um, okay, it's uh, in Give me a second, I'll think of that when I get back. But there's a whole base of, you know, what, what do we do with a base of plants? How do we treat them? Uh, and how are we disposing of it and controlling it? So that's a huge thing. I know well, one time we were talking about the uh, evasive, uh, I call it bamboo, but, you know, the, the not state weed. is, yeah, it's not weed. It's, you know, that's a huge problem that we have. Um, <clears throat> there's also, um, we have to keep up our own Connecticut laws. Uh, they'll be doing re a resident complaint, so that's, you know, if someone calls about a tree, we have to look at it, um, we have to post them, we have to do public hearings, if, if, if there's a, a dispute about it, that would be part of that. Uh, getting tree grants, uh, the uh, management of uh, plant health and recommendations, we have uh, our parks, like North Farms Park, we have the parcels behind uh, TBS, that's forest, we have all our uh, <coughs> land just in the center of town that we really haven't done much to. Actually, uh, when you mentioned the, the grants, so this person could oversee maybe applying for grants apply and, for okay, grant, so yeah. there could be a revenue opportunity you know, there. Yeah, and plus, there, plus he would be the assistant tree ward, I'm the tree ward, but he'd be the assistant. So he would be going to all the seminars, the Connecticut Tree Association, which is a lot of information. Uh, replanting trees in town, we're supposed to have a plan for that even though we take them down, but we're supposed to be putting some in. Um, also, uh, being in charge of just the tree crew, you know, basically we out cut the tree most of the time, like I say, every single day, but we'd be using them for whatever, but for the most part, that's what he would be here for. Uh, then that's a whole other thing, the safety for trees. We have to comply to certain laws. Uh, we have bucket rescue, we have to have on this, we have to do CPR. Training. We have to do electrical hazard training. So these are all the things that go on that most people don't realize. It's it's, it's a huge responsibility, especially the elect, uh, electric hazard. You know, we have to be trained to be able to, to work around the wires. Um, <clears throat> you know, the person. You know, uh, you know, we're we're looking to cut back on some of the. I'm not going to say we're getting rid of all the contractors because. 
that's probably going to be virtually impossible. But I think it, it's getting better from where we were. Um, well, in we storms, if we have storms, I mean that, def storm, that, storm, that that make, makes a difference major too. Major storms, you have contracts. You, you just can't. You have to just to get the roads opened up. But and then uh, you saw the requirements down there. It, it, you know, it's not just anybody off the street. This is a lot of education that goes into this. So I think it would be a huge help for the town and to keep up with all our regulations for what we need to do. How long, ha I mean, I, I know like the parks and the town properties and stuff, they're just due to all the other stuff, the, the complaints and all that stuff, those have kind of been put back to the back burner. Is yeah. that a safe I mean, thing we, to say? We, yeah, I mean, I mean for, forest management's a huge thing and that also falls underneath them also. Okay. Uh, so North Farms Park, and we do have a forester that we work with, I, I've been working with, but this would just enhance that because there are some, in, in, like in North Farms, there's some cutting that needs to be done there. You know, the stuff on our other properties near the farm, it's a little bit different. A lot of the um, um, tree clearers don't want that wood because it's a little bit too close to the road. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't be doing it. Right. We should okay. be thinning things out. And so it's a major. Okay, a major plus to your. Yeah, and especially with all the disease we have. And, that, and that's all, also, too, he'll be tracking. You know all these diseases that are coming into the state. That's when you go to these tree um, associations, and they tell you what's going on with the maple trees, the white oaks. You know, so you can prepare a leaf going forward. And not only that, but because of all this other work, we haven't done any any lifting of trees on the roadways at all. Zero. Lifting last, meaning in the last meaning lifting up to 12, 12, 13. Oh, trimming them. Trimming them up. Okay. You know? We've been just doing of removals and you know as you know you've seen the numbers and the amount of uh, wood that we've been grinding it's just phenomenal and that's because we had a little pandemic with trees <laughs> so, so frame that and so some of this stuff you listed like spraying and vegetation and mm -hmm. Connecticut laws and so is that what um, so you cannot do that without an arborist? Is that is that what you're saying? We don't have a so, so I don't have my supervisory license anymore. I had given it up because we had it. Yep. So you have to have a supervisory license, and then you have to have applicator's license, which all has to be tracked. Okay. So this person not only will have a supervisory license, but we, we would be doing, he'd be keeping track of what gets sprayed, if we spray him. And, uh, and, and it's very tough in the schools now. And I'm sure Rose knows about it, but you know you, you can't basically the, the, the younger kids you can't do anything anymore in the school about spraying. But there there is guardrail spraying, right away spraying. So there is stuff that needs to be done, but it's very tight. <coughs> and all the new laws coming up. So it's like you know you, and, and continuing education. It's continually all year long. It's like anybody that. That has to do so, so does an arborist bring this to the table, or or do you hire the arborist and then get provide the training for to be qualified for all this? Um, well, some of the training has to be done. Yeah, uh, you know, continually. Not, oh yeah, it's, all, yep. it's continually. Everybody's got to get points. <clears throat> some of the stuff he can do, but he'll be in charge of that. Okay, knowing that who's certified for electrical work, electric, you know, working around electrical. You can have people that aren't certified and still do tree work, but right. when you're around wires, anybody on the crew at that point has to know bucket rescue. Right. Because if anything ever happens, you know, you have to know what, what, what yep. to do. All right, thanks. So. Does an arborist have to get recertified all the time? All the time. All you the have time. to go for continuing education points all year. You have to get they so have to get. Right now we're paying for all of this we're under contract already. We were, we haven't been yeah. in the last year because the, the one that was doing it was retired. Yep. But yes. So Franny, it sounds like not only do we need the arborist, it sounds like we probably should have had the arborist the past couple of years. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because I mean, being we, that we're not we trimming the tree, we haven't been trimming the trees or anything. No, because we've been doing all the other tree work. Right. And that's the other thing. You're going to have a guy that's, you know, basically is going to be cutting trees most right. of the time. Now we just take the highway crew and we go out and do what we can, and then we get busy. We hire contractors. We get overwhelmed, and we still have three contractors almost every week. Right, so it sounds to me like we definitely need them. 
Yeah, so it's, I mean, it's yeah. in the budget. Yeah. Um, I, I'm definitely not, I don't think any of us were proposing to cut it. They just wanted more information is basically what I've heard from people. Um, so we appreciate you <coughs> giving Thanks. us more detail. Thanks, um, Fran. Yeah. Thanks, Fran. Um, the other thing in public works, just I, I don't necessarily want to take action on this um, tonight just because there's just six of us here and I think it would be better if we had a full council is I know you have been asking about a superintendent for the last number of years um, and the more that we have talked about it um, we really need to start planning um, for succession um, Franny's not going to be here forever as much as we want him to be um, I think at some point in time Franny will want to retire um, and we just, the superintendent is like right under Franny. Franny would have an opportunity to train this person and it gives us, the town, an, an opportunity to look at that person and see would they be qualified to step into those shoes at some point in time. Um, and we get to know that person a little bit better. Um, so we are thinking of putting this position into the budget and starting mid-year in January. Just, I know you did not ask for it because you asked for the arborist, mm -hmm. um, but this has become important to a lot of us um, to start thinking down the road and planning for down the road. Um, but personally, I would like to wait on it until everyone is here and since we're not finalizing the budget tonight, but I just wanted to let you know and everyone else know that that is what we are thinking. Um, that was one of the questions we did ask Anthony and he gave us numbers of what it would be to add the superintendent um, for a half year starting in January. So. Mr. Chairman, those numbers were based on last year's budget request. So Mr. Morell will probably update those with more accurate numbers as far as the pay goes that was using last year's numbers. Um, yeah, I mean, you can share those with Franny and if he thinks they have to be adjusted at all. Um, well, even, even the arborist, we haven't settled. The arborist is, is, is union, the superintendent is non-union. Right. So the, the numbers for even the arborist are, they're very close, but we haven't finalized. We can yeah. finalize it until we get Yeah, but if, I mean, if it's a few thousand dollars yes. here or there, I mean, yeah. that's kind of what contingency is for, if, mm -hmm. as long as my, feeling is if we have the bulk of it in the budget and if there's some minor adjustments that need to be made plus or minus um, we yep. can take care of that yep. okay um, the next item that I have are you, are you yep. in public work oh yeah go ahead so there's a couple things that we to think about um, one is um, the farm I, re I really, I really think that the, the farm is going to start needing work over at Hogger Farm, the barns, and two bar, uh, two oh, yeah. three buildings there. We did the farmhouse last year. We painted it and did a new roof. Looks 100% better. Um, and and there is some work that has to be done on the land. I, I, in, in, I, I would think that we would try to at least take some of the rent, and I don't even know what it is anymore because pieces have been taken away from the farmer. So. We have to look, really look back and see what we're getting for rent. But I think some of that money should go back into the, the property there. Because right. we really need to totally paint agree. the barns or they're going to start. You know, we're actually going to be knocking one down pretty soon because it's falling down. You probably see people buy. But there's always a little stretch there. Are we talking about the property next to the, the public works? Yeah. The Poco Fed, okay. you know, where the, the, the yeah. house is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure. Yeah. So, so you know, it's going to need a coat of paint. You know, we're going to need a, a roof on one of the buildings one of these days. So I think if we can build up a fund for it, and then at least we have the money to, 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 to fix it. So can you get us, unless you know tonight, Anthony, how much we collect on rent or for the next meeting? Just the next I'll, meeting? I'll check while you guys are talking. Okay. So um, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, I and I so too. And actually, you know, we have that account, that maintenance account in the capital. Yes. Even if we had a sub-account in there that it's 
the, that that money is for, you know, to be used on that property just so that it Maintain stays the property, there from right. year to year and doesn't go back into the general fund and we put money in there from the lease, then since you're taking care of the other account, the maintenance account, you we can see. That yet. Pardon me? We didn't, we didn't approve all that yet, did we? The other maintenance account. What, as far as you taking care of it? Yeah. I thought yeah. we did at, but if we need a motion, we can. I thought we took care of that at a council it's meeting. Too. No, it's on next agenda. So it's pulled yeah. up brought back. It's on next, so it's next okay. agenda. Okay, all right. Okay. Yes, yeah, so, and again, I don't know what the lease is at this point. Right, no. so we'll just, we'll get that information and we'll just yeah. take so care of all of that so that right. since you're kind of managing that in the funding, this way you know how much is there and you know what has to be done on those buildings. Um, and we have money to, to do it, or at least to start it. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. In, in January, we took in $4,600 for the Auger property rental and Mark is looking at seven hundred dollars for the property rental. Yeah, I don't know. What is it monthly? No, it's monthly. That's for a year. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> not much. Now, well, we knew it wasn't much. So that's for the whole. So that's for the whole year. So somebody's living in the house? No, no. It's just it's the land that the farm farm land. Is, the farmland that they. Rent. Spend it's wisely. really for the yeah. growing season. <laughs> yeah, well, 50, it's yours. It's $5, spend $5, wisely. Fifty-three hundred dollars. <laughs> okay, well, it's okay. We'll we'll take care of that. The, um, one last thing: the um, the uh, uh, um, driveway, DPW driveway. Oh yeah. Did you want to know that? Well, um, no. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to need to know the number yeah. because it's not budgeted and it has to be done and it's part of the police department project. Yeah. So I can tell by this that it's probably along the lines of NBIS that we don't want to know, but we have to do it. <laughs> no, I, not that bad. It's just that it's a high number. We don't want to know it, but Might it has to give be us done. a hint. Well, I, 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 unfortunately, the engineer. Uh, couldn't give me his number yet, but we I worked up a number, so I, I think this is a high number, but it's like 250,000. Oh, that's not so as that, bad as what I thought. I, so that's that's <laughs> like the leasing material from the other side. Now, I may have to do some of the work, and I could probably have the pavement done and stuff, but you know, it's using the material from across the street. And but this is not further. this does not include the drainage. The dra I added 70,000 for the drainage, so it does. Oh, so it's it's drainage so, and driveway. And it and that's not budgeted in the project, correct? No, no. it's not. Correct. Okay. Nope. And so, could that be part of bonding if we wanted to, Anthony? Certainly, it's a, it's a project expense. You, yeah. you wouldn't be incurring it if you didn't have the project. So it definitely is a project expense. Okay. And there's no issue as far as the state, as far as reimbursement, like the school project. It's all our money anyway. So whatever we want to borrow, we borrow. Right. It's and starting I'll to sound foul. I will confirm the number. <laughs> 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 Might spend it now. Two fifty. Two fifty. Okay. All right. Thanks, Brandy. Yeah. Okay. Now on to community center. Which is account forty four oh one. Okay, so we had discussion previously with the council in regards to, um, especially after Park and Rec did their budget workshop with us, um, about the salary for the director and the rec supervisor. Um, the commission had recommended pay increases um, for both of them, and they were cut at the manager level, but um, we would like to institute um, pay raises. Um, so I would like to make a motion for account 4401-101 um, for the salary increase for the director um, to increase that by $3,500. I second that. Any discussion? Is there a second? Oh, there was a second. Yes. Yeah. 
Why did it increase at five hundred dollars, Rose? Um, thirty-five hundred. Right. Well, from my my little talking point sheet, it's an increase of five hundred dollars from on there. Um, their original increase was um, five thousand for the director and eight thousand for the rec supervisor. Okay, cool. um, I got it. But then they did some other things in the budget for the director in her travel allowance okay. to compensate. Any, any other discussion? Completely agree. Okay. Do you want to do it? Yeah. Uh, Michelle? Present. <laughs> well, in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Okay, the next one is also to line 4401-101. And it's a salary increase for the rec supervisor. And I would like to make a motion to increase that by 7,500. I'll second that. And part of this is that during this past year, um, the rec department, along with other departments that really had to change the way they service um, the community, and everything and um, the the rec department did an absolutely phenomenal job in retooling very quickly on a, a number of their events and also part of this is um, especially on the rec supervisor is currently the rec supervisor and the secretary are basically making the same amount of money and the rec supervisor has really done a tremendous job and between Carrie and Jesse they are uh, a very good team along with Kathy Poston for the seniors um, and they have done a remarkable job and I just think they need to be compensated and this was part of the reason that the rec commission made the recommendations that they did um, so this kind of correlates to the whole thing also. Totally agree. As a parent, what was could have been a really unbearable year was a very positive experience living in this town for those reasons. And I came from a town before that had nothing. <laughs> and um, but this was it, it really was amazing what, what they did and pulled together on. So. Michelle. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Okay, so Anthony. 1831.45. Thank you. So um, the next motion is for line 4401.120, which is pension and social security um, for the two increases we just did. And I'd like to make a motion to increase that by 1,831.45. I'll second that. Could you repeat that? The amount is? 1831.45. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Um, the next one is line 4401203, cleaning supplies. And I just have a question. Um, so in looking at last year's budget, um, I believe your budget was like 1,082 for cleaning supplies and now this year it's 1,150. It's not much of an increase, but yet we just approved an additional part-time custodian um, because of the, the what you need in order to open and everything else. So, is 1150 enough in cleaning supplies to accommodate all of that? Because basically, it's the same as last year's budget, um, but you're going to have two custodians <laughs> now and have to do more cleaning, I assume, to meet yeah. the regulations. Um, so, to answer your question, 
yes, we weren't sure the position would be approved when we were putting together the budget, so an increase would be helpful. Um, for example, our sanitation wipes cost $28.49 a bucket right now, um, which if we went through a 500 count bucket a week would be about $1,481 in additional expenses um, based on the sanitizing of the gym. That wasn't factored in, unfortunately, because the fitness center has not been open this year. We were trying to be conservative and seeing if we could cut things and really trying to present you with a, a, a budget that that line would assist. So, so what would be a number that you're looking at for an increase? I mean, that's $1,500 right there. Um, so is that enough or 2000 2, an in increase? I, I could see covering all of the additional cleaning expenses. That would be perfect. Okay. Thank you. So I'd like to make a motion to increase line 4401.203 cleaning supplies by $2,000. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Okay. Um, next item is line 4401209, which is gas for the senior vans. So in looking at your budget, um, it, there's 4,000 gallons budgeted at a price of $1.69. I don't know where you can buy gas for $1.69. And in looking at other departments in the budget, they're at two nineteen. dollars So um, that's a 50 cent increase. Now I don't know if you have separate pumps at Public Works that you get cheaper gas than the other departments, but um, it just seems out of whack. Um, so I would like to make a motion to increase line 4401-209 by $2,000, which would put it at the police department's budget of two nineteen a gallon, which is fifty cents more in your budget. So that's where the two thousand dollars comes from. Four thousand gallons at fifty cents. Um, so my motion is to increase that gas for the seat. A dollar sixty nine. Two nineteen in the budget. Yeah, I, I looked I, I saw your department was a little bit that's why I didn't know if you had separate pumps at do they fill no. up at Public Works? Oh, of course. Oh, well, I didn't know if there's you know park and rec and no. police, fire, <laughs> pub, Public Works, all separate pumps. I don't. Know. <laughs> I'll second that. I probably got one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's only six months. Yeah. Right. We're locked in that's for a dollar sixty nine until the end of the calendar year. Oh. Wow. So. And the other one goes, no, it's not. Going out the numbers, I would say. No, 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 it's okay. What's the usage of these? They still use the senior vans because they've still taken them for appointments and stuff. Got it. So it's still where it was? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Okay, the next one is line 4401-301 telephone. So last year in the budget, um, because we went to a new phone system and they put everything under central services for the phones, um, the only department that was charged in, in the budget book last year was Park and Rec. And we made this same motion to take out the line charge and I think fax is what it what is this? 301. There's gonna be a motion at your next meeting to move the money back to the department. To move it out of central services back to the exterior buildings that we thought we were gonna build one bill, but we got separate bills, uh, community center, library, uh, public works. It was originally intended to be one bill, we thought and then when the bills came in, they were able to break it up by building. So we're going to reallocate the budget. We can't do it until the two departments until April. So on your meeting next week, they'll be transferred and move that money back. Okay, so don't do this motion is what you're saying. Correct. Even though we did it last year, we, we it didn't work the way you thought it was going to work. It's essential thing. We're getting one, one bill that's been itemized, but the bills came in by location, so we're able to charge them directly to, to the appropriate building. 
So are you going to take what's in the budget under central services and divide that up back to the budgets? To the last, I'll take the buildings that are outside, like the central the community center, uh, Lauren Davis, all the exterior buildings will get their money back in their budget. We've been charging their accounts okay. throughout the year. But okay. the budget's been living in central services because that's what we thought the mentality was going to be last year, only to find out that they could actually build us independently separate buildings. Okay. So that okay, so we'll just leave that one alone then and not do anything since you're going to adjust it anyway. And then um, line item 4401-307, miscellaneous mileage for other rec employees. Um, so I noticed this was an increase over last year. Is that for the park monitor? No. Uh, part of it... Because it says park monitor, or, or, or well, no, it says other employees. Yeah, so that was for the park monitor, and if you look at the manager's proposed mm -hmm. cuts, that that was he he proposed cutting that out because we are going to be able to give him a town vehicle um, to to drive around and monitor the parks. But the increase that you see was due to the accurate. Oh, there's, okay, there's driving. no there's no notation in our budget book. Of yeah, I what apologize. was cut of what was cut? Yeah, on on that. Yeah, okay. absolutely. All right, so we will not have to do that either. Um, oh, so as liaison to Park and Rec, I just saw an email that there is a special meeting tomorrow night because there's an opportunity to buy a van. Yes. Is that what I understand? Yes. You want to just, I know, which is not in your budget. No. Um, but there's no provisions for next year's budget to account for anything that this, you know, man might need. Correct. Um, so the opportunity presented itself through the state bid. State surplus. Thank you. Um, uh, for a vehicle, um, it's a 2013 eight passenger van. Um, so it's smaller than what we typically use, but we would be able to utilize it for additional senior transportation as well as recreation transportation. It's available for $7,105, so about $7,450 out the door. We did have the public works mechanic go up and inspect it to make sure that we've done our due diligence. Um, that having been said, we can't guarantee that there's nothing wrong with it, but we, we've at least gone up, checked it out, and inspected it. Um, so we would like to look at acquiring that vehicle um, before it goes to public auction. So, so you would use this year's funds to purchase it because you obviously have a surplus in your Correct. budget. Correct. Yeah. So that's where the money is coming filled. from. Yeah. So we would like to look to to fill it from the from that opportunity. Yes. Okay. And do you anticipate normal maintenance on the vehicle? Nothing out of the ordinary Correct. can be absorbed in your budget. For next year, I believe that's, so. That's presented. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so the the gas account, what we just did, will take care of gas I believe and so. It'll stuff. just make things a little bit easier for okay. us to get out to seniors and things like that, and and because have more than one vehicle on the road at the same time, which sometimes is often an issue. And with COVID, we're restricted to the number of people. So currently, we're only driving three people in a vehicle. So we're driving less because we're going to less places. But having an additional vehicle will allow us to get more of them. Does that and make a, sense? Yeah, an eight-passenger vehicle, you do not need a CDL driver? You correct? do not, correct. So, so I could go out and pick up people if we get in a bind and we need to go get somebody, which happens. So. Okay, so um, that's an advantage yeah, absolutely. also for you on that. A, a huge advantage, correct. Because I know how difficult it is to get CDL drivers. Yes, um. yes it is. <laughs> so. Um, Yes, and there's only 30,000 miles on the vehicle, so I should clarify that it's a very, very low mileage vehicle, um, and it was the best of the four that were being offered. Okay. Perfect. Thank Great. That, I, I thought state surplus was $50 for <laughs> <laughs> So uh, wouldn't, wouldn't there be some increases in some other lines, like maintenance and insurance well, that, and... Well, the... The maintenance, that's what I just asked her. She said that they feel they can absorb it in their, what is presented to us and not add anything to their existing budget. Um, insurance, would there would probably be an increase, but we might have 
if we get rid of vehicles, then we get have some yeah. taken off. So that's all part of the insurance package. Um, okay. On the thing, but yes, there would be additional. Um. Oh, and the the other thing, since we're on park and rec, and is I know that we are having um, the fence done, which is in the current year's budget, the fence at North Farms Park, mm -hmm. but it looks like we might have hit a snag there because it looks like nothing's been done for a while. Yeah, so um, the project was awarded at the end of October, but it was delayed due to inclement weather, and according to the contractor that we hired, a nationwide shortage in the type of fabric that we requested. Um, some additional uh, um, concerns have come up regarding the material since the project has started. So Fran and I have been out at the site kind of monitoring the progress and seeing what's being done. Um, and we had some additional concerns, so we did get the town attorney involved and we're requesting no further delays by the contractor. At this time, the contractor is saying though that it will be an additional five weeks until the material or fabric we requested comes in. So we'll be meeting with the town attorney on Thursday to evaluate our thoughts on that and whether it's worth continuing with this particular contractor or switching to another contractor which could also still delay the project five to six weeks because of a new contractor coming in and ordering material so we're evaluating the situation and trying to get the situation rectified as quickly as possible because this was this supposed to be back online for spring correct? that was the wasn't goal there, yes. wasn't there like so many days that they had to complete the project once Correct. it started? Correct. So it was technically supposed to be 60 days from the awarded date. So if you looked, That's it was October. awarded back in October. So yes, this has been an issue. Due to the weather, we kind of delayed it for part of, but he was supposed to start as soon as the weather broke, which was March 8th, he began the project. So it should be wrapping up okay. in the allotted time. Okay. So we were getting new material? Yes. The material that's no good that was there? No. It was the wrong material? What? Was, was it the wrong the, material? The, 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 the contractor put out there, yeah. some of it was not to our standards, yes. Um, so we've, we've been monitoring the, the size of the piping as well as the type of the mesh or fabric that's going on because we went with a higher grade mesh to ensure that we didn't have the damage that we saw reoccurring on that fence. Um, so we're we're trying to make sure that all of the correct materials that were spec'd in the bid are actually what the contractor is putting in, so that we don't have to go back and redo anything. Or and we're catching it right now. Is okay. pretty much so what the we're poles and the mesh aren't the right material. Um, no. So pretty much everything that's up there is coming down. Not everything. There are a few poles that are, are the right material, <laughs> and there are a few poles that are not the right material. So we are working to rectify that. And like I said, we, we put him on notice that he is in violation of what was spec'd in the contract. So we're able to manage the issue. Yes, okay. we are fully on top of okay. the issue and, and monitoring daily, going down and checking on the work that's being done to make sure that it is exactly what's spec'd in the bid. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Um, the next item I have is under EDC um, 4673. Um, so there's $5,500 in there for a marketing communications program, which is a new initiative. And um, just wondering exactly what this is. Um, if we could have one, more one, information. One, 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 because, one. because we've had, you know, several things that we've implemented and paid for and then they go away and then you know there's no benefit from it so just wanted more information prior to approving this mm -hmm. on here so I see yeah, this, I know this here is, yeah. good evening Elizabeth Kaplan chair of economic development thank you and so um, as Rose said I, I completely understand what she said regarding other programs that we've had in the past. Um, two, three years ago, we were part of a program out of New Haven called Rex Development, which is essentially the New Haven Economic Development uh, Commission, if you will. And we partnered with them for a few years 
in the hopes, and this is prior to Roger being employed here as our coordinator, we partnered with them as a group of volunteers to try to get some business marketing for our town. And we were hopeful that they could aid us in that process. And although they did work with us, um, their focus really is mainly on New Haven. And we really did not draw any benefit. And then I believe it was two years ago that we decided not to renew our <coughs> membership with them, which was a bit over $5,000. And then, you know, Roger came aboard in the meantime, and he has networked tirelessly within the community and, and working with businesses and with Carrie as well when she was here. And we talked about how we could really reach local business and create North Brantford as we've done with the Sunflower Project and we have the, the wineries open now and, and we have um, you know stewards of the land. How do we become a destination? And we have been working with, uh, who was a volunteer in the Sunflower Project, her name is Lauren Liefenfeld, and she has come up with a concept to help local business. Basically, someone coming into the town, uh, she has made a QR code. Are you all familiar with a, what a QR code is? And if you're not, I'd be happy to explain it. Could you? Sure. So if you, um, you could go online or you can go somewhere and it looks like, it's usually about this size and it looks like, um, almost like. Basically the menus you go to at restaurants yeah, and you have to take a picture yes. of it. Then. Yeah, so this is what a QR code okay. is. So if you have an updated cell phone, you basically just point at it and the information pops up on your cell phone. So yes, menus are a, a perfect example now with COVID, they don't want people touching things. Yeah. So she has developed this project for these window planes to go into local businesses. And what would happen is, or it could be on someone's vehicle, for example. Anyone can have one of these window planes. This is just part of the program. What is it, a window? Window plane, you know, uh, it's oh, like, yeah. okay. you know, it's a, it's yeah. a QR code. And it, it is, and it would be related to North Brantford. So um, I sent her a picture of, I have a million sunflower pictures. So I sent her some sunflower pictures, and that's going to be our window playing, if you will, for North Brantford. So it'll be special for our town. And so anyone coming into town, anyone in town, could go to a local business, put their phone, town hall at Eden, or the libraries, and put their phone to this window playing, this QR code, and events that are going on in town. It could be a town event. It could be a business special. It could be um, a, a high school event. It could be anything that is going on in town that would pop up on this window plane. So someone coming into town getting gas and they choose to point and shoot basically can find out what's going on in North Brantford. So it's a really incredibly cool concept. And so we feel that this would really help enhance the businesses in town. We really tried to make inroads to communicating with our businesses as Roger has done. And we want them to see what the EDC is trying to help them and, and promote their business in the community, events in the community, we work with Park and Rec, you know, whoever, whatever. And so that's what this program is all about. And Lauren is essentially developed this program from scratch. It, she's done a lot of research on it it's not being done anywhere um, and elsewhere in, I don't even know about the country, but certainly not in this vicinity. For example, you go to Guilford and they have a kiosk there. And if you want information about Guilford, you have to stop at the kiosk. And I don't know if it's manned, it was at one point. And you can go in and someone can tell you about events going on in Guilford. This sort of takes all of that out of the equation. It's a really simple way to engage the public about our community. So we're essentially trading what we spent on Rex a few years ago with something that is intrinsic to North Brantford only. And anyone in the community coming into the community, it could be put in a newspaper, you know, like the sound, that kind of thing. And Lauren runs the program and on um, businesses, what would happen is, so a business might buy a window plane for $5, put it in there, 
and then they can choose to advertise daily, they can act, you know, weekly. So we feel it's a huge investment for the businesses in our community, and it's really gonna help us put things on the map. You know, we have Destination North Brantford, that's another website that we have, and this is called Local is Good. So we feel this is, this is something that could really help our community dramatically, and I don't know if you have any questions about it, but it is totally local for North Brantford only. So this is a startup program, Correct. obviously. Absolutely. So she obviously gave us a good, dis because it, if it's not around any place else, were kind of the trial absolutely yep. and so she gave us a very discounted price oh here. yes this is not this is essentially that the money that has been budgeted for us um, is all going into the operation of this really no no salary nothing really for her per se it's all about startup costs and buying the window planes, any advertising costs, you know, any paper printing, any of that. So it, it is really no, nothing's, essentially nothing's going into her pocket. Is that ready to go on July 1? It have? will be ready to go, yes. I don't know if any of you went to the uh, meeting yesterday, but I know Lauren presented there at the quarterly business. Um, that was this morning. Right. Was it this morning? Today? What, the what 13th. Was today? It was this morning? morning. I'm sorry, I've lost track of all days. I, I, have, <laughs> I know, it's spring break. I have, no, I have tennis every day, so that's where my focus is right now. So. Can I add, Lauren's just done an amazing job with the Destination North Brantford website, and it just makes, I know one of my questions was related to our town website, and I would really love to be able to see that like all incorporated, like even, I know you're talking about a refresh for the site, is there a way to just make that branding that Lauren created be a central hub, not just for like for economic development and everything, and I just thought the design was really well, and to be able to like have that central communications for everything in town, if, as opposed to having like silos of communication, like a one-stop shop communications hub, for our town would be really nice. And I don't, I'm just putting that out there. I know that there's plans to refresh and I, I would just love to see what right. Lauren has done bleed into our other communication outlets. To what Tara is speaking to, if you go to the Destination North Brantford website, that is the economic development um, hub, as she said, and that was all done gratis. That was all her own volunteer yep. work for the last three people years. People pay a since, lot of money for that. Yes, <laughs> so. since the Sunflower Project started. So, you know, that's the kind of investment she has in our community. She absolutely loves our community. And she spent many hours researching, and she is a marketing person. That's what she does in her profession. So she spent a long time researching, how could I benefit this community? And so the first step was the Destination North Brantford website. And now this is taking it to our businesses. And um, it's, we believe as an EDC is a very worthwhile investment. Because we invested in Rex, it didn't work out because we thought with New Haven that would give us greater exposure. And we feel this will give us exposure. I mean, we're getting more and more exposure between Sunflower Project and you know the Destination North Brantford video is, has been seen by many people, so we're, we're asking for your confidence in us to take it, take this step, this next step. Okay, I, I, we, I, no, we just we didn't know No, we appreciate it. Idea. Yeah, and please, um, anytime, uh, you know, you're always welcome at an EDC meeting, we're online, uh, you know, still at this point, but anytime you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank Thanks, you. Liz. Thank you. <coughs> Okay, um, the next item I have is contingency. So there's a huge increase in the reserve for contingency, like by $246,000. What is driving that increase? Just, I mean, this, this year we're at it like 191, and it's projected that we'll end up around 175. 
and and next year we're up to 438 in the budget. It just seems. Yeah, the, so the 175 is the base amount we use every year. Okay. And then there's the 263, which is the wage increases contingency for the admin, clerical, library, and fleet. $263,000. How many administrators does that cover? Administrators, clerical, library, and police. Everybody but public works. Fran, don't you feel cheated? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. How many well, I, 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 I guess it was just, yeah. I, I was just a little confused when you said that there was 2.5% in the budget. Right. I thought it was in the accounts, yeah. whatever. Is it and because those numbers aren't set yet? Is that why it's contingent? Right. They haven't started negotiations yet. Okay. So it's a placeholder. It's a contingency, so there's no guarantees to go in anybody's department. Yeah, I get it. I get it. We'll put out when the contracts are settled. Okay. Okay, that's all that I have under general government services. I don't know if anyone has anything else, but those were the areas that I saw. Does anyone have anything else on that? Do we haven't done anything in 10 years? No. We can really a big contracted it out with a company. They were in the building behind the old town hall on the hill. It was something we didn't really want to get involved with, and there was some savings, and they were getting to kind of get evaporated, getting more of a hassle, so we just kind of got out of the whole, whole business. Yeah. We carried this department on our books that we haven't used in about 10 years, and I'm just too curious if we think we ever going to get back into that business, or if I just deleted off our of the it's all zeros. It is. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have a couple of. We, we have land preservation, too. We, we carry it's all volunteers. Yeah, we have land preservation. We haven't bought a piece of land probably, I can't tell you how long. Yet yeah, we carry this department on our books. And it's just trying to clean things up, especially if we're looking to move to this new software. We want to eliminate any kind of things that we're not using on a regular basis. And I wanted to remind you about the uh, human resources. Right. I got to put the money somewhere for that. I wasn't sure where you wanted to put that. Would that be in council budget, manager budget? What were your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to come up next week in our okay. discussion. I, cause I, didn't, I saw under technology, you have a line item for, you know, like IT. You know, there was $10,000 in there for, I, I'm assuming that that's support wherever we meet. Yep. need support from, yep. um, which triggered the HR in my mind. So, and I didn't see anything in there, right. but I didn't know exactly what department to look in. But yeah. I went through I went through all of them, and I okay. didn't see the HR piece um, in there. Um, but I think that's a discussion for the whole council um, yeah. to have, because I know we had brought that up. And um, okay. but I I um, do think something has to go into the budget. Correct. My suggestion on the other accounts is if you can get a list of accounts we haven't used, if, if, if you want to make some changes, like, and just present that at okay. another council meeting okay. to, to d delete them, because it's not necessarily a budget item right now. No, no, no. Um, so, but we can definitely clean up um, for you. Excellent. Thank you. Anthony. 
Yes, sir. So, so there's no, re I mean, if we remove a, a, an account, that doesn't necessarily mean the next budget year you can't add an account, right? Yeah, no, right. it doesn't. It, just, it right. takes up two pages, of, um, we're yeah. printing pages of that book that yeah. are, are totally useless. Yep, no, I get Two it. pages there, two pages on land preservation, so it's four pages times, you know, 100 printings and everything else, it's like we're just wasting money. Yeah, no, I <laughs> understand. <laughs> So if I needed counseling, there's nothing there anyway, right? We'll give you an empty page, Walt. <laughs> you can doodle on it. Yeah, you can take the page and doodle. <laughs> So are we done with general government services? Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Capital improvement plan. Okay. So there's not a lot on capital improvement plan, but I do have some questions. Um, under town hall, uh, so under the software upgrade, I know we have 144000 from last year budgeted. Correct. And this year we have two hundred and sixty thousand. So are we saying it's four hundred thousand dollars the first year? Three hundred and eighty eight thousand six hundred and ninety nine dollars. But that's it that's if we went with the separate database. But didn't the superintendent say he was paying for something on that? Right. That's what well before <laughs> that conversation came up. So okay. if if you want to net it down to just our piece, it's about a hundred and 53, I would leave, maybe make it 160, leave extra time for extra um, training time. Mm -hmm. So bring the 260 down to 160. Mm -hmm. So we could cut 100,000 off of that? Yeah. It's not 91,388, but if you want to cut 100,000, nice round number, or 95, whatever. 100. 100 sounds Three. good. Okay. So I'd like to make a motion to decrease the software. Um, under budget funds um, by one hundred thousand dollars. I'll second that. I, I just have one one question, Anthony. You made you just commented about uh, two databases. Yeah. Can you just uh, what what did you mean by that? Well, that was that was the whole. Um, Fork in the road where we were at. We decided to go with the Munis product. The theory was do we have two separate databases, two separate installations basically, or do we have one shared database? And my comment at the last meeting to you folks was what's the end game? If, if, you're, if we can talk about this joint finance department, then we go down the road of one. It's not going to happen in our lifetime. Are we going to build a new town hall big enough to accommodate everybody in our lifetime? Probably not. So then it became a money issue. Then it became the $120,000 delta over five years saying, why would you go with the two when you can go with one and save $120,000? And then as, as Rosenbeth and Scott stepped up and said, I'll eat the hundred and twenty over five years. And then it became, okay, well, for less aggravation and you know, there would, there would be some scheduling conflicts if we had one database. We couldn't do checks the same time. We couldn't do this the same time. So this eliminates all, all that hassle. We'll live in a, in, in a similar software product, identical software product. We can talk to each other. We can backfill each other if need be, uh, help each other with questions and do once a year kind of thing. So it's accomplishing some of the tasks that the uh, study showed out that we should be going down that path for. But it's gonna, it's gonna be two separate databases, two separate installations basically on the same software. That seems to be where we're headed, just for the sake of simplicity and get the ball rolling. So the, the incremental cost, the shared database first year would have been 297,302. With the separate databases, it's 388,690 in year one. So that's where you can take that hundred thousand dollars off. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Um, the second item under town hall is I'd like to make a motion to eliminate, uh, to decrease 
by $100,000 the generator at Town Hall. Um, this was discussed at um, previous council meeting um, as not necessary due to the new uh, EOC at the police station. I'll second that. under culture and recreation. Um, so we have the library painting. Um, this was discussed at the library budget workshop and um, the council was felt very strongly about getting both of these libraries painted, um, doing a complete paint job and then um, from there we can do the maintenance going forward and do it you know, Franny's managing that account, and you know, if we need a room painted, we do it and not wait until we have to paint the whole library. So, one of the things that we had discussed was um, will there be money left over in, I don't care whose account, um, on, the, on the town side from any department so that we can do Smith Library this year, in this budget year? which is right now budgeted at $28,750. Um, so you've got, you got about 40000 left in that pot currently from this, this year's application. And there's, it's not referenced again next year as far as having a recurring $50,000 every year appropriation. It, just, just wait, we're getting, we haven't gotten to that yet. <laughs> okay. So uh, you, you, take the, you take one of those two out of the 40 remaining you have under the current year's allocation if you want to. Yeah, I would prefer to, instead of putting money back into the general fund, um, based on what's left at the end of the year from a variety of different account, uh, departments, I would like to see us take it from that rather than deplete the 50,000 um, account on there. So you want to add it to the budget fund column now, I'm saying? Or you want to take it out of current year's money? I want to take it out, I, my proposal is to take it out of current year's money on there um, because I'm sure with departments not being fully open um, and things not spending all the money, I'm sure there is money throughout the budget to come up with $28,750. So if you can look between now and next week and give us some indication as to whether that is possible. I can do that. That would be great. Are you saying 20,000 or 28,000? 28,750. 28,750. Um, but I would like to make a motion to allocate $37,500 for painting for Atwater Library for fiscal year 21-22. I'll second that. Basically, my thinking is we're taking that money from the generator money that we just. Budget well, fund column? Budget fund column, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Um, and then uh, for the maintenance account that's under, that we established last year, the $50,000. So, we did ask for an accounting of that, which we got. Um, and I know s some of these expenses were, you know, per the lease um, for the three fire companies. Um, we heard about the, the lock at the recycling um, building, which is fine. But what's the tri-state generator maintenance? The emergency generators that were around town during the budget process, some of the departments came in, so they hadn't budgeted money for generator maintenance. So the discussion pursued, okay, we have this maintenance pot of money, let's call that maintenance of the generators. That's not what this, that's, that's not the intention that this, mo that this money was for, that the council had talked about. I mean, it was taken out of there now. Um, so, so, I know, but it's, it, that's, 
to us that's not maintenance of a building that should be built into your budget it's an annual contract uh, you know there's contractual other contractual in every department's budget Correct. Um, that's where that should go this okay. pot of money is for maintenance on town owned, owned buildings so that we can maintain them upkeep on property yeah and maintenance contracts I, I feel and most of the council when we talked about it felt that that is not that's not what this account is for um, so moving forward just so I, that I every, move that one now I move more. Um, but so in saying that um, I would like to make a motion to increase the maintenance to add to the maintenance account twelve thousand five hundred dollars in, uh, from budget funds in budget funds for the 21 22 years and that should bring that account whole and, and plus a little bit more in there I'll second that well I pardon me 12 five 12 five right so basically the that a hundred thousand from the generator we're going to take fifty thousand back um, between these two projects. Any other discussion? No, no. I, I agree with yeah. that, absolutely. Michelle? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Um, and the last one is just under education, and this came up in um, the budget workshop with the Board of Ed. Uh, the TDS Playground Project for $18,216 is under, I think, LOSIP. It's, it's under a state grant fund, so it's not gonna affect the mill rate at all. But that project was able to be done in this fiscal year, so I'm just correcting the budget. So I'd like to make a motion to decrease um, the TDS Playground Project under education by $18,216. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? And so this was under whether it was LOSUP or MUNI or whatever. I don't know if there's anything else in our budget that we could allocate money to using some of this money or you just do you just roll it forward? How does that work? If the way it works is anything uh, to get three hundred and one thousand dollars a year. Anything that you don't use or assign to a specific project is considered town aid road and it goes to okay. the wise man to use. Okay. That works for me. Or the next slide. <coughs> okay. That's all that I have under cap ball. Okay. All right. Debt service. That service, there is a, uh, a cushion built in there of $195,000. Otherwise, it'd be a reduction in debt service. And again, we're just trying to gear up for that inevitable increase that's coming with these projects. So there's a, you'll see that the debt service basically is level funded year over year, 3750-499, 3750-619. So it affected the level funding which is what your goal and debt service is supposed to be or, or as close as possible. So within $120, that's, that's pretty reasonable. So the 195000 will go uh, into a reserve fund. We did that a couple of years back, if you recall. Again, we're just trying to mitigate that bear in the room that we know is coming as soon as these projects start hitting. So if we can have a little bit of money nestled aside to help the debt service, the general fund at that point when those uh, big payments come in. We did have a conversation with uh, Mark Chapman today. I was going to tell finance from our way to fix everybody now. Uh, looking at going out in August, because we do have the 2015 bonds are eligible for refinancing. We have a little bit of money we can refinance, and that would be in August. So rather than go out in May, as we have previously talked about, and then back out in August again to minimize the issuance cost, we're going to hold off and do everything in August. 
And when we looked at the amount of money looking at between the um, high school project between now and next, next August and the police station now and next August for about uh, 40, uh, around $40 million. And I had mentioned to Mark also that even though it's not in the CIP currently, we need to know and put in the CIP the NDIS issue as well as the Stanley Q. Williams issue so we can have some money there in an adopted CIP so that if we get all these ducks in a row, when we do this bonding in August, we can get that money and then next school year, when the schools are out in summer of 22, we have the money to do the roof project at high school, in high school and at uh, Jesse's place. So you're talking probably, again, I don't know, I know the number we looked at the other day was about four and a half to do the middle school, the fix that uh, mm -hmm. Rusty had kind of talked about. And I know uh, and that, that wasn't, again, the, the pitch roof idea. And same on Jesse's roof. We had the rough one number of about a million dollars to do her flat roof idea, but not another pitch roof idea. So I'm not sure. Have we finalized flat roof versus pitch roof? Have we gone down that path yet? Or are we, are we firm on that yet? Are we still? Well, I, I don't think we're firm because the way that we usually would put out the bids on that is to do an ad alternate for a pitched to see once what I mean that's how we did it with TDES right. to see once what the cost difference was um, and then decide and whether I know we talked to Franny about pitched at STW and you know we're not so sure that it can have first of all structurally that it can hold a pitched roof Correct. and then can <coughs> the you know it's unlikely that the whole building can be pitched the same as TDS, the whole building could not be pitched right, right. Um, either. So that would all be stuff that would come out during the, okay. the bid process um, on there. And it's tough to know at this, I, I would have no idea um, what that would be. But I would definitely like, you know, to, to look at that right. as an option. And if Rusty's talking a new roof on NBIS, um, it would be the time to look at that right. also. Um, so. so I did just keep that we need that, that we need to get a number into the CIP, even if it's a, a very ballpark number as we're finalizing the CIP yep. now. Because in August, when August comes around, we'll go out and hit the market. So we have something concrete saying, okay, the council authorized X number of dollars. X number of dollars, and then we can go back from there. And if we, we also, if, if we have to adjust it at some point in time, we can do a supplemental okay. appropriation. Yep. Um, okay. What we also talked about today was the in his pro forma statements. He used about a three and a half percent interest rate for these first couple of bond issues, and the rate now is below two on twenty-year bonds. So what we're looking to do is coupled with the refinancing the two thousand fifteen debt, we're going to issue. So say we're up. Say we're up to say 46, 47 when all of a sudden a million dollars. We're gonna issue bonds enough that we can keep our debt service somewhat steady, take advantage of these low interest rates, and then we'll issue notes for the additional amount. Say, so let's say it's $10 million is the magic number to keep our debt service somewhat consistent. The other 37 will do one year notes at that point. But we will get a little more fine tuned as we progress down the, down the ballpark. But that, that's what we're looking at now is the roughly 40 million for those two plus the two roofs. So again, 47, 48 could be 50. I don't know those numbers end up being. But a portion of that, we're gonna do a bond to keep the debt service as level as possible. And the, the increased amount, we'll do a one term, one year note at and the rates of those are, are ridiculously low as well. So it's a very good time to be in the market. So we're gonna take advantage of the best we can. Originally, our, our thought was to do short-term notes for everything, but again, if we can capture some of these very low bond rates for 20 years, let's lock in that now as well and keep our debt service somewhat consistent. Um, I just have one other question, and it's for information for our next budget thing. Is One of the questions that was asked prior to tonight's meeting was um, the, the fund balance percentage yep. for the last several fiscal years. Yep. So I noticed, you know, there was a significant increase in the unassigned fund balance and the percentage also um, went up for year ending 630-20. Yep. Um, so 
how much could we take out of there to stay at a percentage to go down 1% in that 17.69 if we went down to 16.69 what would that number be I thought the numbers together for you. Okay. It's percent of the subsequent year's budget. Correct. So, so the budget, what, we're at 55 now? So 550,000 would be 1%. But does that, so that includes the 350 that's already in the budget? Yeah. So it would be an additional 200,000? Or 500,000? No, 550 on top of the three. On top of the, uh, three, on no, top of the no, 350 sorry. that's in there. Okay. Okay. All right. That's all I have under CFP. If anyone else has anything. All right. Um, do we have anything for education? No. Um, because they, they are on school break this week, um, and there was there was someone that was going to come, um, but with the short, you okay. know, not, not as many. Right. We just we told them not to come tonight. That since we weren't finalizing the budget okay. tonight anyway, so they'll be here next week. All right. So then number three, number four. Right. Three, uh, four, and five. Yep. Yeah. We can't do. Okay. Absentee ballot option. Um, the governor signed another executive order, 10E, which um, now has extended a reason by which you can request an absentee ballot to include COVID like he did last year in the time during the election. So the residents will have that option if they choose not. The polls will be open, but if they would prefer not to go to the polls, just like they did in the primary and the uh, election, they can now request an absentee ballot. That's the difference. Secretary of State's office is not going to be mailing absentee ballot applications. It goes back to the way it was. They, they still have to request it, but they will have that COVID reason on there. They will include that in the new absentee ballot application that should be online that will link to our website. So that just means we may have a lot of absentee ballots again, but I'm hopeful that um, I can handle that with myself, my deputy, and the temporary person that, that I had in mind to hire that Thank you, by the way, she started on Monday. She helped me through the election last year, so she's she's already trained on absentee ballots, so we're hopeful that we can do that with just the okay. three of us on the weekends. Um, the other thing is that he had also authorized us to use the ballot box, the absentee ballot box, which we took out to protect for the winter. They asked us originally to remove them and protect them because of the salt and the snow. And we said, could we ask, I did ask the option, could we leave it in? And they said, yes, but if anything gets damaged, it's on you to repair it or replace it. So we took it out, so we do have it. So we will be putting that back in place for the residents to use. Um, he also extended normally absentee ballots need to be in. Uh, we issue them up to the day before the election or the referendum and they normally would have to mail them or bring them back in by the, you know that day. Um, we never, with the use of the absentee ballot box, that was extended that the residents can put them in the ballot box up until 8 p.m. So that was also extended for the referendum. So basically everything that was in place will be in place this year for the referendum. So that was the big thing. Um, there have been some, when we go to our budget referendum do the, pro the budget process and some of the smaller towns that have town meetings and adjourn to the referendum, usually you do it with something that's called less than three weeks notice, which means we are not allowed by law to mail out absentee ballots. That has been taken away so that we can mail out the ballots when a resident requests them. We can mail them, they can download uh, the applications and the ballots. I mean the applications, we couldn't do that. They have to pick them up. That has also been waived in the, in the executive order, so the residents request them, we can mail them. The key with that is um, normally, again, the date issue where we, we state law used to 
obligate us to mail them the day before an election or primary, even though we knew the residents couldn't get them back. That's been waived. We have to determine, which I will determine with the post office. I'm going to call the post office. I, the town clerks have to make sure that they can mail the ballots so that the residents receive them the day before the referendum, so the Monday before. So I'm going to coordinate with our two post offices to see what that deadline is before I institute it so that the residents will know. We'll put that up on the website. So I have to do that. Uh, the other thing was the towns when they adjourn to referendum, or even I think you guys have the option, instead of adjourning within 14 days by state law, well, he waived that, which means they can now, you can make your referendum date later than that if you wanted to move it by a vote of your legislative body. I think we're fine as long as you approve everything next week. Um, I'm, I've already coordinated with Atkins. They can print everything. I have to have, once you approve the question, I have four days to get the absentee ballots, and Atkins has told me if you do approve it next week by the 20th, they'll get me the ballots by the following Monday. So we're okay, we're on schedule. So it's up to us to approve by next Wednesday, yes. or next Tuesday, the 20th. Yes. Okay. And it's people can request them by what? Just calling your office, or is there an email request? They have option? to fill out the application. Application, yeah. It's just the Secretary of State mailed the application last year. Yep. They won't that won't be happening. Got it. The residents will have to download the application yeah. or request me to mail okay. it to them. They have to mail it back and then we mail the ballot or they can walk in okay. to the office. One question. Do you feel, um, I know you, you have help now to get you through until you have an assistant. You know, for the elections going forward in the event, I mean, I know we don't know what's going to happen even post-COVID. If, um, do you feel like you have the resources that you need in the event that this sort of dynamic of voting, absentee, increased use of absentee ballot, um, mm, yeah. what would happen if no, the I state legislature expands that? Right. No, I do not. We, they really need to, if they want to change this process, which is fine, and if you look at other states that have this process, they have an elections division, they have a whole separate division that handles that because people think elections are only in November. My life starts in January and February with the reports and the different things that we have to do, the ballots, getting the list of offices, which I just received, which I'll be mailing out to the town chairman tomorrow. Um, there's a lot more that goes on behind the scenes. It's a year-long process. And yeah. in some years, you know, we have the budget referendum, we could have town committees, we could have primaries, and then the election presidential year, you have the presidential primaries separate from the other primaries. So, no, they, we, we do know, and I think the Secretary of State's office realizes that hopefully the process has to change. And they may have to think about taking it out of the town clerk's offices because that's not our only duty, yes. that's not our only function. So, no, we, we probably are not prepared in our offices when they change this. Okay. Thank you for asking. <laughs> so are there any other questions? I just wanted you to be aware of the executive order and what it means for the budget referendum. So you're, you, you don't need anything from us right now? Right now, no. I'm playing okay. by year now to see. I guess I'm used to working Saturdays and Sundays, so <laughs> oh, no. I envision that maybe. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Um, Memorial Day Parade. Yes, yeah, so uh, I'm bringing back information from my conversation with the health director and uh, his conversation with the state that uh, the parades are permissible and they're leaving it up to the localities and municipalities to make that decision based on their guidelines following the uh, organized outdoor gatherings and so masks and social distancing are highly recommended um, but it is entirely a local uh, decision. Uh, that's where we're at and um, looking for guidance on, on, on whether you think that's a prudent thing to do. I'm for it. I'm for having it. 
But how are we going to enforce masks and social distancing? I mean, you can't tell the police to go out there and arrest people. No, I mean, that's outside. No, I, that's outside. I, I, you know, when we talked about the uh, potato fest and we talked about the parade, you know, just just briefly, like brought them up, and I was thinking that the parade would be be e a little bit easier to 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 <coughs> semi manage or. Uh, allow citizens to manage themselves to it to I guess to a degree um, and to try to bring some begin to bring some normals normalcy back um, but it goes with with some risk too I, I you know but th those are the thoughts that I was having um, but I you know we probably need the whole council here is there a way to do a memorial? celebration that's not like parades of like crowds of people everywhere but like have like a more controlled memorial so we can both honor our servicemen and women mm. do it in a way like that without having like forcing all of our public safety officials and everybody else to be that's a huge lift for them to go out and do that I mean maybe maybe that's fine but there may be a it in between somewhere so so last year, because we could not have the parade at all, um, we put an ad, like a, an ad in the Totuka Times um, for Memorial yeah. Day. It was like a half page ad or something, mm -hmm. so that we still recognized it. Mm -hmm. And was there a small ceremony? Yeah. Right? Wasn't there a small ceremony? Yes. Um, that was held. Um, so that's that's what we did last year because it was right at the beginning of COVID and it was really difficult. But we still wanted to recognize yeah. it. Um, so I, I think it's I agree with Tom. I think we need the whole council here to talk. You know, can we make a decision next Tuesday? Is that still time enough? I know Memorial Day is yeah yeah you know, up. six weeks after that. Can, yeah. can we get it? We will get an East Shore update by next Tuesday, right? In yeah, terms sure. of projections on vaccinations and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. I think we really need that now more than ever to make yeah. this kind of a decision. Yeah, and, and that's a good point, Joe, because uh, we have talked, I have talked to Mike about it. We'll have it, our, our Thursday morning meeting. I'll get those, th the data that he presents there, I'll bring to Tuesday's meeting. Um, but also vaccinations and yes, projections exactly. for vaccinations by mid May. Okay, yeah. Because I think everybody's eligible from 16 and up. And right. What are they projecting is going to actually be done by the middle of May? Yeah, we were we were I think I reported out last time in the in the, in the data overall uh, we were at 43 43% uh, almost. I, I think we're probably at this point um, broken close to 50. I'll see what what we have, but um, again, one of the one of the concerns is uh, when you look at vaccinations, great, but the, there's nothing under 16. So you know, again, for families, you know, uh, looking at children and gatherings, and to the question we ever had about about you know enforcement, um, you, you, we just have to. I think if we do decide to go forward, we've got to publicize and and leave it to the to the residents to, to understand that they they have to and we don't do the thing at the firehouse it. right afterwards right I mean yeah. that that should probably be out yeah I think and, and um, you just you know because that's charity a gathering that has to be <laughs> everything outside creative about yeah. how it looks and, yeah. and how we go through it so it'll take a little extra thought to do that but I can certainly get the numbers and look at the projections and what we think will be for for May um, but I think we're hovering and close or creeping up on 50% at this point in time so by May I don't know where, where we'll be but we'll try to find okay. out this after that's where we are yep. I didn't adjust the pilot but that's roughly where we are The number I could. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Now the mill rate increase. Then we're at 466. And now, with all the changes we made, we're at 0.55. Well, we don't do 
next day. Okay. We're going to take up that now. Okay. So I'll make sure. Yep. Okay. So, um, do we want any more, any other discussion at this point on the parade other than Probably Mike's going to gather some data? I have it on the agenda Tuesday. And I'd also, okay. in the data, can you also let us know what the surrounding shoreline towns are doing? Are they doing ceremonies? Are they doing parades? Or Some of them, it was in the paper today. There are some that are doing parades. Maybe we can lead the way. In COVID or parades? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody, okay. has to, nobody has to go. It's true. Well, kids with their parents don't get to decide, I guess. Um, okay. Number eight. Okay, so number eight is, um, I had asked to put this on the agenda um, with, with the appointment of Victor um, P.D. Andrea to the PPBC Committee Permanent Project. And this was based on a conversation um, Al Rose had called me um, and asked um, they need someone um, with electrical background. They all have general knowledge, but for the high school project, electrical and security is approximately a third of the cost of the new high school um, that it's involved uh, that. And um, Victor is on the permanent project for the police department. And so he had asked if there was some way he could come on to the committee um, to help them with the high school project. And so initially I talked to the town attorney very quickly and there is an opening under an alternate. So we thought that that would be a good way to do it. But then I forgot about the whole stipulation in the charter about you can only serve on one border commission. And he's already on the police commission. Um, and this, and so even though it's an alternate, it would be the permanent project building committee. Um, but I did talk to previous um, council members, and they thought that there was a opinion by John Gismondi or one of the former town attorneys in regards to someone being able to be on the permanent project and also on another border commission because the permanent project is a committee, not a border commission. So I would like to table this um, so that the town manager can check to see if there is an opinion already, if we have a legal opinion on that already, and if not, if you could, if, if there isn't one, then can you check that out with Vinny? All right. I have some, I remember that because I was here when that happened. It was Jack Zephyr. Oh, Jack Zephyr. They said Jack Casco, but. Jack was chairman of Permanent Project Building Committee and there was a, a, a vacancy on the town council. So you appointed, you wanted to appoint Jack to the town council. And he, I think there was one project he wanted to stay on. It was like a five month. And there was something that they allowed him to stay on for five months until that project was finished on permanent project and beyond town council. It was like, I don't know if it's an exact opinion, but I'll look it up. Yeah, but that's the gist of why that happened. It was a temporary. Okay, if you can just if we can just yes. have that information so that for the next. Happen, but just to clarify, there was it was like a temporary. Just to finish the project. So and then okay. Went on to count if you could just look that up for I the. Will. We can just table this until Tuesday night's meeting and then and see what what it is mm -hmm. on there. That would be yep. great. Thank you. Motion to adjourn to a table? Or do you need a motion to a table or now just to a table? Yeah. Michelle wants to know if you want a uh, formal um, motion to table. Do you want to move to table or just push it to the next agenda? Well, this was a special meeting, so I'll, I'll make a motion to table to our next regular council meeting on April 20th. Okay. Second. Thank you. And then, all in favor? Aye. 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 And then adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.